Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new edition of Africa Today, where we get you the latest news and events taking place on the African scene. And we will start off with our major top stories and reports. The European Union is satisfied with Ethiopia's practices and unilateral actions with regards to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The statements were made during talks with the Egyptian side. More in the following report. Cairo and the EU stress strategic ties in light of joint challenges on the regional and international levels. The statements were made in Brussels during talks between Shukri and EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell. The talks were held to discuss means of activating existing mechanisms within the European-Egyptian cooperation deal. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam topped the agenda of the meeting. Shukri said the international community should live up to its responsibilities and send clear messages to the Ethiopian side of the necessity of changing its current approach. He said the EU may take measures that affirm its dissatisfaction with the Ethiopian practices over the GERD. During the talks, Shukri presented Kaur's vision, which he said aims at regaining stability and achieving prosperity for the peoples of the region. Atop the agenda of the talks were also developments in Libya and the Palestinian cause. Shukri said the EU is ready to expand cooperation and present its expertise and suggestion to solve the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam crisis. He said the EU commissioner stressed the fairness of the Egyptian status and the rights of the Egyptians in the River Nile waters. He said the EU statement called on Addis Ababa to end its unilateral decisions. Shukri also said Egypt and Sudan are coordinating to make this suitable decision to return to the negotiating table. He said the EU has vowed to present new ideas for the negotiations to end the GERD crisis. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're glad to be joined over the phone by Ambassador Ali al Hefni, former assistant to the foreign minister. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Ambassador Hefni, uh, how do you weigh the significance of uh, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri's visit to Brussels? Well, uh, it is an important uh, visit for uh, uh, several reasons. Uh, first, uh, it is a visit to uh, a state uh, with which uh, Egypt maintains uh, a good relationship. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, Belgium, the uh, Belgian government, the uh, officials uh, within that uh, uh, government, uh, uh, and it gives the uh, opportunity to uh, exchange views uh, uh, with regard to the uh, issues of uh, common interest uh, pertaining to the regional uh, or even international uh, uh, issues. Now, now, the other thing is to ensure the follow-up uh, uh, with regard to the uh, the, the ongoing uh, bilateral relations uh, yes. with this uh, country and our interest uh, in uh, attracting more uh, Belgian investments to, to Egypt at this uh, important uh, uh, period that we are witnessing in Egypt. The other thing is to uh, also uh, have uh, uh, important uh, uh, discussions with the uh, different officials at the European Council, at the uh, European uh, Commission. Yes. Uh, so to be received by the President of the European Council to transmit a uh, message from uh, President of the CC uh, to uh, discuss about the uh, current uh, 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 relations uh, uh, that exist between Egypt and the European Council and, of course, uh, the European Commission, uh, meeting the different officials at the European Commission, uh, and to uh, discuss uh, about the uh, ongoing uh, process pertaining to the association agreement that uh, uh, binds uh, the two sides, uh, but also to uh, discuss uh, about things of uh, common interest. Uh, uh, here, uh, indeed, is, uh, uh, comes the issue of the, uh, the Renaissance uh, Dam, Ethiopian Renaissance yes. Dam. Uh, at the time when the Security Council is 
discussing about uh, the development uh, of that uh, conflict that yes. exists between Ethiopia from one side and Egypt and Sudan from the other, the other side. Uh, and uh, of course, the visit of Brussels uh, gives the opportunity to uh, maintain our contacts with the uh, different officials at the NATO, uh, with which Egypt uh, has uh, a good relationship based on uh, the necessity and the interest of both sides to uh, use such uh, opportunities, such way that we could exchange views. Uh, pertaining to uh, security uh, issues, uh, whether at our uh, region's level or worldwide. Right. Well, uh, during uh, his talks in Brussels, Foreign Minister Sameh Shoukri and also uh, Burrell described Egyptian-European ties as important and strategic in light of the common ch challenges facing both sides. How, what are these challenges? Uh, what are these common challenges facing both sides? Um, challenges um, are uh, uh, related to the uh, security, the security in our region, security uh, in the Horn of Africa and uh, East Africa, the security in the Mediterranean, uh, um, fighting uh, together uh, terrorism, uh, coordinating our steps. Uh, and our policies and our strategies with regard to uh, the uh, world uh, fight against uh, terrorism and uh, the uh, organized uh, crime, uh, cross-border crimes. Uh, of course, the, uh, the status of affairs uh, in Libya, in Yemen, in uh, Syria, in uh, 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 the countries that uh, are faced with the, uh, great challenges for the time being and are affecting the overall situation uh, when it comes to security uh, and our national security as uh, countries, be it uh, Europeans or uh, uh, Arabs or Africans. Yes. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, the other issue also is the illegal immigration. You know, yes. we have uh, we have a very good score when it comes to encircling terrorism within Egypt and also uh, putting an end to the illegal immigration through our uh, shores uh, 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 and the Mediterranean, you know, towards Europe. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, so many uh, things uh, that uh, are of common interest that are discussed when such an opportunity is provided. Yes, uh, well, uh, sir, the Grand Ethiopian Dam and Libya were also discussed during the meetings in uh, Brussels. How would you describe Europe's position uh, as a player and influencer in the African continent? Well, the role of Europe uh, is uh, very important. Uh, when it comes to the Ethiopian uh, Renaissance Dam, uh, the European Union, along with the United Nations and the United States, uh, uh, they were uh, observers uh, all along the negotiation process that uh, Egypt, Sudan, and uh, Ethiopia were engaged in under the supervision of the African uh, Union uh, all along this uh, last year, uh, and even before at certain uh, phases. Uh, and. Uh, of course, when it comes to uh, Libya, we have uh, here to remember the uh, Berlin uh, 1 and Berlin 2 conferences and uh, the role played by uh, Germany and uh, uh, the uh, Europeans uh, uh, with regard to our uh, uh, collective efforts to uh, recover stability, uh, peace and security within that uh, uh, country, which is not just important for Egypt being to our western door, uh, but also as far as the uh, overall situation in the, um, in the Mediterranean. Uh, and of course, those countries, uh, European countries, they have interests that they had, they still have, and they are uh, willing to uh, intensify their uh, investments and their, uh, their interest in 
uh, that country. So we have uh, the same agenda to help Libyans to come together and to uh, bring back stability to this country. The date of December next for the uh, presidential and general elections in Libya is very important. So we are pushing together uh, that agenda forward and we are trying to help the Libyans to uh, settle their differences in such a way that we could have those elections at, uh, at the proper time. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, Ambassador Hefni, the meeting also discussed means of activating existing mechanisms within the European-Egyptian cooperation deal. How important is activating uh, this mechanism for both parties, for both sides? Our relations with Europe are old. And uh, the association agreement that we have uh, signed uh, is of a uh, great uh, benefit for both uh, yes. sides. And the two sides, they have interest in maintaining and developing that, uh, uh, that process uh, mm -hmm. and pushing forward our uh, bilateral cooperation. Uh, we need the Europeans in so many ways uh, and they are uh, indeed involved in uh, and through their, their, their different uh, uh, institutions like the European Investments Bank, like uh, and others, uh, there is um, an important amount of uh, European investment in Egypt. Many projects that are uh, they have been realized and are still being realized in uh, in Egypt with the help of our European yes. partners. So it's uh, the story of a partnership between the two sides that it's mutually beneficial. Yes, well, I would like to thank you very much, Ambassador Ali al Hefni, former assistant to the foreign minister. Many thanks for your insight. And dear viewers, uh, moving on with our uh, special reports, the UN Rights Council on Tuesday approved a resolution expressing deep concern about abuses in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray and calling for the swift withdrawal of Eritrean troops, which it said were exacerbating the conflict. More in this report. The UN Human Rights Council called on Tuesday for an immediate end to all violations in Ethiopia's conflict-torn Tigray region and for Eritrean troops to quickly withdraw in a verifiable manner. Clashes erupted in Tigray eight months ago between central government forces and the region's ruling party, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF. The conflict has forced nearly 2 million people to flee their homes and driven around 400,000 people into famine. The head of the EU delegation to the United Nations in Geneva, which brought the resolution, said what is happening in the Tigray region in Ethiopia is appalling. He said it is imperative for the Human Rights Council to be able to address this situation. The EU text passed in a vote with 20 countries in favor, 14 against and 13 abstentions. Council member Eritrea voted against the resolution. Welcome back and still with our special reports, protesters clashed with police in several areas of South Africa and looters ransacked shopping malls on Tuesday as frustrations over poverty and inequality boiled over into the country's worst unrest in years. More details. South African security officials said the government was working to ensure violence and looting that erupted in the country did not spread further, but they stopped short of declaring a state of emergency. The police minister said no amount of unhappiness or personal circumstances from the people gives the right to anyone to loot, vandalize and do as they please and break the law. The violence was triggered by the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma, as his supporters took to the streets last week, but the situation has evolved into an outpouring of anger over persistent poverty and inequality in South Africa, 27 years after the end of apartheid. The economic impact of COVID-19 restrictions has exacerbated the problems. Troops moved in to flashpoints on Tuesday as outnumbered police seemed helpless to prevent attacks and looting on businesses in Zuma's home province KwaZulu Natal and in Guateng province, where the country's biggest city, Johannesburg, is located. Up to 30 people have been killed during the unrest.
Well, dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this edition of Africa Today. Many thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coming up here on Nile TV International.